G'day guys, Socket here. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a quick look at how an amplifier works. Now, this is part of my amplifier series. Uh, we're up to part 13. And so far, we've looked at electricity and uh, resistance and a whole heap of stuff, including the controls on the outside of an amplifier and all the different electronics that make up an amplifier, like diodes and transistors and things like that. And we're going to pull all of that together today and take a quick tour around how uh, electricity flows through the amplifier, how your audio signal comes in, and how those two things combine um, in the output section of the amplifier to create the power that drives your speakers and creates music. Um, so if you haven't already watched some of the videos um, in the series, feel free to jump back and check some of those out. As I said, this is not going to go way into depth because we've covered a lot of the detail already in uh, some pre pre uh, previous tutorials. Um, but this is just a short little video, um, uh, just pulling all, this, all the um, all the information that we've covered together uh, so far. So uh, without any more of an introduction, let's go take a look at how an amplifier works. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at this uh, old school Fusion 3000 watt amplifier. And the reason I'm just choosing this one today is because it's, it's really easily laid out into its various sections and it's easy to kind of explain and follow along. Um, but uh, uh, if you've watched the inside of amplifiers tutorial um, you will see that all of the amplifiers both modern and old school have got very similar electronic components in a very similar um, stage that the signal kind of flows through so in this particular case uh, if we just have a quick look at the, uh, the connections and things on the amp so here at the end we have our power connections 12 volt ground and uh, remote two 40 amp fuses and then your speaker uh, speaker wires we connect the speaker wires up to so this is a four channel um, you know, positive negative left right and uh, front and rear right um, on the other end uh, this is uh, so sort of the input side um, so this is uh, these controls are duplicated so one set for the front one set for the rears uh, the inputs are RCAs, so um, you can't use a digital input with this old school amp, so they would have been analog in signals, left and right inputs for your front and rears. Um, each uh, set has a gain controller, which is just marked minimum and max. And then you've got some bass boost and some, uh, you know, crossovers, right? So um, as we've covered, if you want uh, to sort of avoid those, then... Uh, you can uh, turn the crossovers to full and your base, bulls, uh, base boosts down to zero. This one also has an input mode allowing you to either run it as a two channel or a four channel, which means that you should be able to bridge, run this as a two channel amp, but get extra power by bridging the um, two speakers. And of course, you then got a power and protect LED little light. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what year this is from, but it's probably 15 or more years old. Um, but uh, yeah, the as I said, the reason I've chosen this amplifier is because um, it's easily laid, uh, sorry, it's well laid out in terms of being able to sort of follow what's going along. So this is the power supply section, um, you know, this section here, we'll talk, go into detail in a, in a minute. These are your uh, power rail capacitors, uh, these are your rectifiers, um, which basically Oh, I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, so this is all to do with your power supply. Over here at this end of the board, this is the end of the board that's connected to, you know, your gain knobs and bass boosts and all that type of stuff. So your signal is coming in and then this part of the board is um, manipulating the signal before it goes to the output. So this is the output section, this part in the middle. Um, it's a four channel amp, so you can roughly see that it's divided up into or duplicated into four areas. So if you run a line between these um, these four resistors um, and then across this way, you've got one, two, three, four. You know, that's one channel. This would be another channel, uh, the third channel and the fourth channel, right? Um, yeah, and so you can see that they've got the same, the... Uh, same number of resistors and transistors and other things going on. 
All right, so how would this kind of all work to uh, drive your speakers? Um, so first of all, of course, you would be plugging in your RCAs to these inputs, right? So here's uh, the left and right input, the left and right input, and then the little gain controllers um, so that you can adjust the input uh, voltage gain and sort of uh, calibrate it against uh, whatever uh whatever head unit or or, or device that is um, feeding an input signal to the amplifier and then you've got these capacitors and uh, uh resistors and things that are basically um you know if you've turned up the these are the, the controllers for the bass boost and switches for the bass boost and all the crossovers and all that type of stuff and so this is the circuitry here that basically um uh, manipulates the signal coming in from your RCAs and adds the crossovers or the bass boost or whatever it is, right? And then that signal is then fed from this uh, this, this board here, uh, preamp board or whatever they call it, um, over here to the uh, output section. Um, so starting down the other end, so that's how your signal is sort of getting to this point. Um, starting down the other end, um, so we're going to be connecting up our power supply positive, remote and negative, um, you know, cables in, uh, you've got your two fuses. So, of course, your power supply is then coming in on these um, metal connectors uh, here. Here is your fuses. Um, and then you have these these things called bus bars. Uh, um, yeah, they're, uh, they're basically able to carry a lot of electricity uh, around, so um, they're probably the power supply for your uh, power transistors, right? Um, okay, so let's explain what's going on here. So basically your power supply is, you know, coming here through the through the, um, the fuses and uh, into these capacitors here, which are basically like little um, electricity storage tanks, right? Um, so uh, they, they charge up as you um, supply power to the amplifier and they're going to supply um, a power uh, power to this round donut shaped thing called uh, this is your transformer. Now, um, the transformer has two different coloured wires. You can see it's in red and this copper colour. Um, and this is your primary and secondary winding. Okay. So what happens is electricity is flowing uh, back and forward uh, through this through these two types these two different windings, and um, as an alternating current and I'll explain um, how that gets created in a moment but basically uh, your power supply coming into your amplifier is going to be in direct current right it's only flowing in one direction and it'll be 12 volts 13 volts 13.8 14 volts whatever it is your you know your car electricity um, supply is you know based on how charged your battery is and whether you've got the car running and all of this type of hoo-ha right um, but it's, you know, let's call it 13 volts just to be consistent. So this 13 volts DC um, is not going to have enough voltage to drive the speakers when they, you know, need peak power uh, or there's a big, you know, bang on the drums or something like that. So uh, for the amplifier to have 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 volts of uh, power available to uh, supply the speakers with the amount of wattage that it needs, um, we need to convert your 12 or 13 volt um, DC power supply into, you know, let's call it 40 volts um, DC power supply in your rail capacitors. And the way it's done is um, through this transformer. So the transformer's job is to take the incoming 12 volts and turn it into 50 volts or whatever it is that the amps uh, power rails are maxed out at. Um, now, the problem is that you can't step up or increase the voltage of a DC current. Um, you To do that, you need an alternating current. And so um, when you pass an alternating current through this transformer, we produce a magnetic field which creates induction. Um, and depending on the number of wirings that you have in the transformer, it allows it to step the voltage up or step the voltage down. Now, in this case, it'll be stepping the voltage up and there'll be a specific number of windings on the transformer um, that match the voltage that you want to have in your rail capacitors. So the way that the alternating current um, is created 
is we have these power transistors, right? Now, as you know, power transistors are basically high-speed switches um, that are controlled by a chip called a pulse width modulator. Um, now, there's a bunch of um, resistors and other things to control the uh, voltage that is getting to these transistors. They have basically three terminals um, and they switch back and forth, you know, very, very quickly, you know, 20 to 40,000 times a second, depending on um, the, the speed at which you want the uh, transformer alternating current to switch back at, like they're a fixed they're a fixed speed but in this case there are six of them and um, they'll switch back and forth back and forth back and forth creating this alternating current and then that alternating current um, will go to these uh, this these two little devices here called rectifiers now the job of the rectifier is to turn the alternating current which is now high voltage because it's gone from 12 volts into this device where the alternating current has created the magnetic field and the induction field and all that stuff, the voltage is being stepped up to, let's say, 50 volts, but it's still in alternating current. We need to turn it back into direct current so we can power the rest of the amp. And that is the role of the rectifiers. Now, the rectifiers are not transistors. They're a pair of little diodes, uh, two diodes connected together that share a common leg. Um, and so what happens if, uh, if you watch the uh, tutorial on how a diode, uh, how a rectifier works, um, they essentially, uh, one diode is always on, one diode is always off. Um, this is the positive rail, this is the negative rail from memory. And um, because only one diode is on and off, uh, they take half of the alternating current waveform and turn it into DC power, which is then fed um, and charge up the negative and positive uh, capacitors, which is basically, you know, when we talk about your um, your voltage rails on the uh, amplifier, there is no real rails in here. I mean, these are bus bars; they're not they're not power rails. These are the closest that you get to when we're talking about power rails. They're basically uh, capacitors which store your high voltage DC to run your speakers. So now we have power ready to run the speakers. We now have a signal that has been received in. It's been kind of cleaned up and manipulated if you need it to. And now we're going to drive, um, oh, sorry, use the signal coming in, you know, this music signal, this analog signal with its waves going up and down and varying voltages. And we're basically going to convert that signal into um, uh, volts and amps that are then supplied to the speakers. And that is the role of the output transistors, right? Or the, the, the the speaker driver transistors, they come in many different names. And as I said, there are four of them, or four of them because this is a four channel amp. And so if we just look at you know, one group of them, um, so once again, what we have here is a bunch of uh, resistors to control the amount of voltage that is getting into the, sorry, resistors that are, that are feeding these uh, transistors. And you'll notice that on these four, that they have different numbers, right? So this is a B778, and this one over here is a D998. But we've got two D998s and two seven, uh, 8778s, right? Or B778, sorry. Um, so these work in pairs, right, to cover your positive and negative um, parts of the uh, output uh, to your speakers. Okay, so what happens is the signal from the, uh, well, the audio signal is being um, used almost like uh, a template. So when there's a high peak, uh, the transistors will draw uh, voltage, uh, supply it down the, uh, the power rail, and then to your speakers, right? So each of your speaker connectors, right? And so um, this area is supplying the the volts and amps that you need to drive you know, that that particular speaker, and you know, and these other ones drive the you know, the other three. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's a really rough rundown on you know how an amplifier works. So there you go, guys. That brings us to the end of another tutorial. Um, if you're interested in this topic and you want to get into some more detail about how the uh, the 
the various components of the amplifier works, be sure to go and check out the inside of an amplifier tutorial and any of the tutorials that uh, talk about the various components such as, you know, the transformer or the pulse width modulator or, you know, whichever component that you're interested in. So um, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions, um, please feel free to chuck them down below. I will get back to them as soon as I possibly can. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next episode.